All right, we are looking at the BIOS. This is a UEFI BIOS from EVGA's Z77 Stinger, and this does not look like a UEFI BIOS, and that makes me very happy, even though a lot of people on the internet are very angry about this. Yeah, I have no idea why. This is a lot easier to work with than clicking around, you know, pictures. Yeah, all those pictures. I love the uh, the overview. This is the first screen that you're presented with when you come into the BIOS. You see pretty much everything that's going on. Look at all of this. So you've got we're running the Core i5. Uh, 3570K, as you can see. We've got our voltage info. Uh, all of our temps are on here. And, and this is like everything. Voltage health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, you can see if your 3.3 is too high or too low and your 12 is too high or too low. And I'm personally impressed that I get to see this when I get into the BIOS. I don't have to dig around into to the hardware monitor. And you can access this information in other parts of the BIOS, but it's all presented to you in the beginning. So let's go ahead and go through advanced, shall we? Yep. Under advanced, we have our ACPI settings, which is for suspend and sleep settings. Yeah, you do S S1, S whatever, S3. And below that, we have our onboard devices configuration, which covers everything. Let's take a look at it. Uh, we've got two different USB 3.0 controllers, and you'll see those on two different sides of the uh, back of the motherboard. Uh, the Wi-Fi module, this one does not have Wi-Fi built in, but, um, you know, you can add, like, an... Um, to the uh, PCI Express, the mini PCI Express port, yep. you can add a Wi-Fi module in there and stop complaining. Everyone's complaining about no Wi-Fi. Uh, it does have Bluetooth. It cuts a bit on the money for the board itself. Yeah. Because manufacturers want to usually add, like, another $10, $15 just because it has Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Just go on eBay. <laughs> There's our uh, eSATA controller and the Intel NIC there. That's the Intel 8257-4L. That's the Intel NIC on the back. Uh, there's our audio beneath that. Mm -hmm. Right there. That's the audio. And then below that, we have our high-precision timer. Leave you, that on. Yeah, leave that on unless you're using an older operating system like XP or some distributions of Linux don't need it. But pretty much any modern-day operating system, you do need it. Yeah, but Linux and, and older operating systems, they do it themselves. But this one will take care of that. SATA. So let's go under SATA configuration. I mean, you could enable, disable everything, which I don't know why you do that. Unless I don't maybe you're running an LSI RAID card and using a tiny and making a tiny little server. Why not? <laughs> Why the hell? Sure. <laughs> it's a it's a rock solid board. I mean, it really is. So I could just like kind of see that. Yeah. If you wanted to do a tiny server, why not? Um, there you can select your different SATA modes. Uh, running in an AHCI, which is usually the way most of you guys will run it, but you can also do RAID. You can do RAID or ID, which I don't don't know why you would do that unless maybe, you have maybe you're mechanical. running like old mechanical hard drives, maybe. Unless yeah. it's strictly a gaming computer and you just have a two terabyte in there with SSD caching. That's it. That might work, yeah. And now you have control over each individual port. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, we've got hot plug, which is nice. Yeah, you have hot plug option for each of the ports. You could disable each port individually, which is a nice thing. So this could be a little, like, hot swap um, server if you wanted it to be, if you if you wanted. But we're going to use it as a gaming rig. And then you have to set up your SATA device type on each of those. You can set it to be a, uh, an SSD or a hard drive. So that's pretty handy. Under that, we have our Intel Rapid Start technology which lets you start the computer in almost instantaneous from a deep well, sleep. From deep sleep, yeah. yes. It, like, wakes from sleep. It's, like, almost scaring the monster back alive. It's like, Bleh! I have no idea. <laughs> USB configurization. Yes. Which you have USB beep, which when it posts, it will post a beep for the USB devices, which it even describes to you right there. Oh, my God. That's what that does. <laughs> We've got our legacy USB support as well. And we're going to leave that enabled in case we decide to hook up some legacy devices. Why not? Why the hell not? All right. We have smart, smart settings, which are for mechanical hard drives, mm -hmm. which I've only seen a few drives that I have. I have a two terabyte mechanical that has it. It's like a lot of server stuff there. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of cool that's on there. And here's a lot of stuff that we saw on the overview right here in the hardware monitor. Yeah, you could look at your temps. There's your temps. Yep. We got your fan speeds. You can tell it's a smart fan. It, the fan will run at 100% if, say, the temp are, is at 60 degrees Celsius or higher. Then there's another setting. You can do it 85% if it hits 50, so on and so forth. You have four of those, which is a nice feature. It's yeah, easy. and you can run it in the smart fan mode as well. Like or you can just do modes. manual yeah. until 100% all the time. Yeah, but I do like the smart fan mode a lot. You see this a lot. You see, like, a lot of Windows programs that let you do this, but it's kind of cool to have it in the BIOS. Yeah. I usually leave my, mine to manual. <laughs> just do it like that. Oh, yeah. Next up, you have your J-Power fan mode, which is your power fan connector on the board. You can set the RPM to that one. Below that, we have our chassis fan connector, and that currently is running a 200-millimeter fan. That's why the RPMs are kind of weird. Yeah, it's, like, going crazy right now. All right. 
Uh, under that, we have voltage monitor, which is what you saw on the front. It yep. just tells you your, your V core, your 3.3 on the VCC, your 5 volt, your, your platform control hub, V core, your CPU voltage termination, all that stuff. And nice, nice to have it all organized this way. Smart Connect is interesting because it, uh, what it does is you set a designated time for the computer to wake. The computer will wake. And it will check in with, you know, the server and get, like, your emails and whatever else you have on there. And it will sync it back with the cloud so that it will basically just grab all your emails and then go back to sleep. That's essentially what it is. It wakes up, grabs your emails and your social networking crap, and goes back to sleep. I, I kind of like that. I mean, if, you're, if your computer's not in your bedroom, like a lot of us have Maybe it. it's at your office and you want to be able to have access to them at night. Yeah. That's very handy to have there. That is your advanced settings. All right. Let's take a look at what we have on the chipset here. It's pretty much the Z77 chipset, which I mean, system agent just tells you your graphics configuration, whether you want to enable, disable the internal graphics, how much, you know, the aperture, the, how much texture memory you have. Basically, it just controls how much memory you could split. Yeah. Simple as that. Generally, if you have a video card in there and you don't want to use it, just disable it. Yeah. I mean, there's something else. You can also use the um, Intel technology that allows you to switch between the two. Yep. Um, and you can go... And, and use the you know your dedicated graphics whenever you're in a game or something, and then when you're back in Windows, it'll switch automatically back to the onboard graphics. That's definitely a good way to reduce temps in your case. So that's yeah. pretty much on. I've seen that on all the newer Z77s coming out. Like yeah, but some of them don't have it. Just yeah. they cut corners. So, all right. So that's that. And you have your DMI configuration. Something you really shouldn't mess with unless you exactly know what you're doing. But there's generally never a time you need to mess with your DMI. I've never ran into it. Yeah. Uh, then you have Northbridge PCIe Express configuration. Basically, more advanced craziness. Yeah, and this is a PCI Express Gen 3 uh, port, so we're going to leave it at Gen 3. If you're doing something that you need to specify Gen yeah. 2, you can do that, but I'd rather leave it in auto and let it take care of itself. The only thing we're going to be changing with this, if we change anything at all, will be some voltages here and there to, to maintain a, a high overclock. But we're going to leave this pretty much as it is. Yeah, they've really gone out with including everything you could literally tweak every little bit of the board which is kind of surprising yep chipset one is stuff you really generally wouldn't mess with unless you want launch pixie boot which is if you have an operating system install on a server you're installing on machines you enable that so you can boot to the server and a lot of times if you're doing this you're either a network professional already or you're using this in an office and the network guy is going to do all this for you so if you don't know what this is you're probably not going to need to worry about it yeah Restore AC power loss. It tells you whether if, you know, you lose power to, well, lightning storm or something. What to do, you know, restore to the last state or just power on or power off? Pretty much. So this right now it's set to restore to the last state, so it will reopen the computer in the last state that it was in. CPU temperature monitor, that's that little LED readout, so you can yeah. see what your temps are at. Yeah, ERP mode is like uber power saving mode. Uh, we're not going to use that. No. I don't, like, I don't like the way it makes our sleep states. No. But, yeah, you can if you want. <laughs> I mean, try it out. I don't care. It's overclocker. Let's talk about overclocking, all right? All right, now, we're going to make a separate quick video on overclocking, but here's where you control everything that's going on, including your multiplier, your memory configuration. Bus clock. I mean, literally everything is here. And all of the voltages. So check out our second video on that coming up really soon. We're going to get, we're going to push this thing at least a gigahertz. So that's that. Moving on over to boot. Boot configuration, pretty much straightforward. I mean, you have your setup prompt timeout. Which you can tell your boot time to be, you know, instead of BIOS, Windows. It will sit there in the BIOS waiting until you push a button. Say you just want to do something with the BIOS. Say you're tweaking it and you're overclocking. And well, you some of these things with an SSD, they start so fast you don't have time. So you can set like 10 seconds to wait if yeah. you wanted to. Most people are not going to use that, but some people will. Boot up numlock state. It is what it is. I mean, when you boot it up, you see the numlock button light up. Wow. Exciting. Uh, quiet boot there. That's full screen logo. So you don't ever see the how much memory you have. I mean, on these U85 boards, you, it looks completely different than it used to. Let's show them what we can do with fast boot. Now, with fast boot, you can disable several different devices so that they will not even initialize, uh, like your UEFI driver. You want to initialize your USB because if you have keyboard and it's the USB and you've got it plugged in, you might not be able to get to the BIOS. Yep. There's no PS2 ports on this board. Yeah, even though there's PS2 in there because Z77 supports it. And there's your network stack driver. We leave that disabled. It'll enable once you get into your OS. Yep. Now we got some carryovers from the old days. Which gate gate uh, 820, that's from 8086 days. So we're going to um, leave that as upon request and not even worry about that. 
uh, just skip over those and we'll go back to the boot uh, priorities and you can just select you know which device boots first it's the way it's always been and it, it works so who cares pretty much option ROM messages that's if you have a say a card with its own ROM a LAN card with its own ROM that will tell the computer to actually show the BIOS and sit there and let you know it's being initialized so that's pretty good to keep it the force BIOS just in case you have some of that yeah. keep current tells it to basically just gloss over it I mean some boards I've seen take forever if they have an optional ROM BIOS and they'll just sit there until you do something All right so we, we can keep it current and that'll make it yep. maybe make it faster depending on the circumstance yes all right, so we covered the rest of that. Then we have security, uh, which is, you know, your password and everything. Yeah, lock and, it up. Yeah. That's pretty much it for this BIOS. So check out our overclocking uh, video. We're going to do one. Well, we're going to record it right now, and you can watch it right now, too, because there's a link on the screen. All right, I'll uh, see you guys next time. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. If you don't, then I, who cares? I don't know. That's the end. Banana pudding. Banana pudding in your ears. Thank you.